What is up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Fantasy Fellow Show. My name is Kyle. In this video, we're going to be going over the waiver wire report for week two here. We just finished Sunday week one. As I record this, it's about Monday. Uh, we do have a game going on tonight, Buffalo and the New York Jets. So I might add some of those guys if we need to to the waiver wire column. But uh, this one's going to be just kind of a quick 10 to 12 minute video that just gets you guys tuned in and primed for the waiver wire run. I will be doing a live show every Tuesday evening starting at 7 o'clock Central Time. So if you guys want to join me live and get your waiver wire questions answered, that would be the time to do it. Uh, but before I begin, I just want to note, I am starting to put in week two content, so you guys can get your start-sit charts there. Uh, you can also take a look at some of the, the DraftKings game lines and see how many points are going in in the games. Uh, that's this chart that you see right here. But we're going over the waiver wire report. There is a link in the description. I'll probably post it in the comments, too. Um, so get in tune with that. Uh, I'm going to start with the injuries to monitor, uh, and I labeled these as P equals probable, Q equals questionable, D equals doubtful, O equals out. Now, the only quarterback that seemed to get dinged up was Anthony Richardson on that final drive of the game. Bruce knee, he's probable. I'm not overly concerned about this. He might be limited at practice this week, but I do feel good about him playing this week in week two. Now, Aaron Jones, he had that great catch and run for the touchdown um, hamstring. He pulled it at the end of the at the end of the, the run there in the end zone. And uh, he said he could go back in. I'm hopeful he can play week two. He might be limited or maybe even miss a practice or two. So we're going to have to monitor Aaron Jones's participation in practice all week. I think I'm going to lean towards him being good to go, but he's truly questionable. Of course, J.K. Dobbins, we're going to pour one out there. He did have the Achilles tear. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to see J.K. Dobbins ever happen, so it's unfortunate. We'll talk about the replacements on the waiver wire soon at the running back position. Devon A-Chain, shoulder, he was inactive for week one. I expect him to maybe have a chance to play in week two here, and, and he's a guy that I like on the waiver wire as well. Evan Hall had a knee injury. He's going to be listed as questionable. The Colts might also get Zach Moss, who I labeled as questionable with a wrist injury. We'll see about Cordero Patterson, thigh injury. I don't think we really care about him for fantasy football. Jamal Williams looked really bad yesterday, and Kendra Miller with the hamstring listed as questionable. I think Kendra Miller is a guy that uh, that might be of interest to us if he was cut this week. Christian Watson at the wide receiver position, we're going to label him as questionable. I'm not, he didn't seem like he had much of a chance to play. They ruled him out on Friday. We'll see about week two. If he can get a limited day in and practice on Wednesday or Thursday, I would feel good about it. We're, we're, we're still waiting news on Deontay Johnson with his hamstring injury. It didn't look good. I, we're probably going to see a multi-week you know, absence from Deontay Johnson. So we'll see. We'll talk about his replacements on the waiver wire. Jerry Judy didn't play in week one as expected, and he's going to be listed as questionable for week two with a good chance to play. We're seeing if Jacoby Myers can clear the concussion protocol this week. We'll see about his practice availability on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. DJ Chark, we'll see if he can go with the hamstring. Tons of hamstrings, unfortunately. Devontae Parker, questionable with a knee injury. And then some big named tight ends here. We'll see if Travis Kelsey can go with that hyper uh, extension of the knee. I think he's going to give it a go. Uh, Mark Andrews with the quad injury. Ravens need him back in their passing attack. I think he can play this week. Uh, Pat Fryermuth left early with a chest injury. He took uh, he took a shot to the chest. He's going to be labeled as questionable here. And then Greg Dulcich, I couldn't find much information on it, but he's got a lower leg injury. So we'll see if he's able to go. Adam Trotman's going to be on the list. Uh, but let's go ahead and look at the quarterbacks. And what I do here is I go to ESPN uh, and I look at their percent available and I try to not list the obvious players here, but I do need to note Anthony Richardson will be my pickup of the week at quarterback if you can get him. Uh, we mentioned drafting him all summer as one of the best guys you can put on your bench as a QB2, and he looked really good week one. Uh, he didn't even have to rush for, like he had the rushing touchdown, yeah, but only 40 yards rushing. I think that's going to be uh, kind of his baseline going forward. So as long as he is healthy, we want Anthony Richardson in our lineups. He puts up an easy 20 points here in week one in, in a pretty decent, you know, tough matchup here uh, against the Jags. And then uh, Jared Goff, QB2 here on the list. He's going to be at home against Seattle. Uh, I should probably change that. I believe it's at Detroit. So let me change that for you guys. Derek Carr at Carolina, not a bad spot Monday Night Football. Uh, I do think Brock Purdy, though, is going to probably end up just being super consistent. We know he's going to throw for over 200 yards and two touchdowns pretty much every game. Uh, Rams defense doesn't scare us. So I do like Brock Purdy a lot if you need a QB2. Jordan Love looked fantastic. He's at Atlanta this weekend. Their defense doesn't, you know, 
terrify me too much. Sam Howell at Denver. We'll see if he can keep running and getting rushing touchdowns. Baker Mayfield against Chicago. These guys are more deep end plays, maybe super flex options for you. Josh Dobbs in a super flex league. And then I just threw Gardner Minshew on here just in case Anthony Richardson misses some practice time. We'll have to keep an eye on that. But for sure, Richardson's the QB2 you want. If, if you, you know, if you started Kirk Cousins or Geno Smith or something and you're frustrated with what you got, go get Anthony Richardson. Otherwise, I think Brock Purdy would be my next best choice. And then probably jared goff here which i'll probably put a couple stars on so uh again check back with me on tuesday i'm going to be updating this list throughout the night and tuesday as well let's look at the running backs which is probably the most important position in fantasy on the waiver wire this week i didn't list anybody above 50 percent, but i do want to mention uh if any of these guys are available and they're above you know 50 percent, go ahead and grab them uh let me go ahead and hit all available here uh and guys Basically above 50%, Elijah Mitchell, Devin Singletary, these guys are handcuffs. I don't know if I love them. Zach Charbonnet, make sure he stays on the, on a team, not on the waiver wire. Ezekiel Elliott didn't have a great game, but he got enough touches. I think he's still a stash. Rashad Penny, we'll see if he's active week two. Jarek McKinnon, like hold on to these guys. Even Antonio Gibson, Cleo Herbert, Jamal Williams, A.J. Dillon, hold on to these guys because they might be of use at some point. Uh, but my top guy here is Jalen Warren, 47.2%. Nothing went well for the Steelers, but Jalen Warren was involved in the passing game, and and he he does look to to be in a more of a committee there with Najee Harris. So make sure Jalen Warren's not available. Tyler Algier took the front; he was the one A to Bijan's one B. So Algier might have a low end RB two flex play going forward. You got the two goal line touchdowns here. He's not involved much as a receiver, but it certainly looks like Atlanta's recipe is they want to pound the ball with Algier and Bijan. Deion Jackson's like literally the only healthy back right now for the Colts. I don't love Deion Jackson. Again, we're going to see if Zach Moss is available. We got to see if Evan Hull is on practice on Wednesday. So Deion Jackson, by default, he might just be the last guy standing there in the Colts for week two. Tank Bigsby didn't have a great debut, but he did score a touchdown. He's still a stash. Uh, Devin A. Chain still a stash as well for Miami. Now we get to the Baltimore Ravens running back, Gus Edwards at 21.8%. I am not sure how the breakdown is going to go in terms of snaps and touches and whatnot, but I do know it's going to be a committee. You're going to see Gus Edwards and Justice Hill and maybe Melvin Gordon. We just don't know yet. I, I think Gus Edwards is probably worth adding and putting on your bench. Don't know if I'm going to start him, though, week two. I want to see more data points on this Baltimore Ravens running back. Uh, I do think Roshan Johnson's my favorite pickup, though, of the week at running back. Because it looks like he was the best back. I, I mean, that was the one game. Packers-Bears was the one game I was glued to the whole day uh, for sure from start to finish. And Roshan looks like the best back in Seattle. They trusted him at the goal line. They gave him a ton of passing work as well. And he just looks different than Khalil. looks different than, than Deonta Foreman. And I think sooner or later, we're going to see Roshan Johnson be the guy. So he's the guy that I want to add for sure. And then Kenneth Gainwell, man, he dominated the touches for Philadelphia. Kenneth Gainwell started the game. He was the primary running back in pretty much all, all situations and passing situations. And DeAndre Swift was just an afterthought. He only got one carry. This is Kenneth Gainwell's backfield at the moment. So he can be plugged in as a running back, too, against Minnesota this weekend. Tajay Spears outsnapped Derrick Henry, didn't outtouch him, but he was on the field a lot. So he's a guy I want to stash. Chuba Hubbard got a lot of work. He was kind of in a 1B situation with Miles Sanders. So, so stash him. Josh Kelly's a nice handcuff for Austin Eckler. He got a lot of work in this game. 16 carries for Josh Kelly. So if anything happens to Eckler, Josh Kelly's going to be uh, probably a running back, too, in our lineups. And if anything happens to Eckler, like, Kelly could be a league winner. So I like stashing Kelly. Now, Kieran Williams is probably going to be everyone's favorite back on the waiver wire this week. I'm not super in love with him, but he did outplay Cam Akers and he out touched him and he got the two touchdowns. He looked really good doing so. Cam Akers did not look good on his volume of carries here. So the Rams, they want to run the ball. Kieran Williams is going to be the guy. I wish he was more involved in the passing game, but he, he was involved enough uh, with the targets there. So Kieran Williams is probably most people's number one waiver wire running back. If you need a guy to plug in this week, I would say it's Kieran. If you have some time and some patience and your lineup's good, Roshan and Kenneth Gainwell, I think those are the top three guys. Uh, just some more stash plays. Clyde Edwards, Jerome Ford, Kendry Miller, Ty Chandler, Leonard Fournette. Maybe he'll sign with somewhere. Uh, Ravens need an opening, but it sounds like they're going to keep their guys in-house. Sean Tucker, Rico Dowdle, Chris Evans, Chris Rodriguez. These guys are all just stash plays at this point. Uh, and then Justice Hill is the final guy to make the list. He is probably the lead back in the Baltimore committee, but I do fully expect it to be a committee. So just don't blow your load on Justice Hill. This is probably going to be a rotating door of committees here. I think Justice Hill is the best catch pass catching back on the Ravens but again they don't really throw to the to the running backs here so if you need somebody and you need them to start someone at RB2 I think it's Justice Hill 
So the top guys for me, Roshan, Kenneth, uh, Kieran, Justice Hill, and uh, you guys can figure out the rest there. Uh, let's move on to wide receivers. And I didn't want to list these guys here, but Zay Flowers and Kobe Myers, they absolutely balled out. They need to be rostered in all formats. I know they're high owned, but I just wanted to note it. And, and same with Traylon Burks. I think Traylon Burks is going to bounce back soon. Nico Collins was the clear lead wide receiver for CJ Stroud. He put up 14 PPR points and he looked good doing so. A lot of passing attempts from Houston. That might be a trend we see continue. I thought Elijah Moore played well. I think he had six targets and two uh, two rushing attempts. That's going to be good for his volume going forward. He can be a, a low-end wide receiver, three flex play. We'll see how Lazard plays tonight, but I think he's going to be probably going up in ownership. Van Jefferson kind of disappointed. We will, we'll talk about the, the Rams guys in a second here. KJ Osborne was just on the field more than Jordan Addison. Uh, one of the gems off the waiver wire here is going to be Zay Jones. He was on the field more than... Uh, Christian Kirk, he was the primary guy in two wide receiver sets with Calvin Ridley. Christian Kirk is not looking good. He only was out there for slot snaps and in three wide receiver sets. So Zay Jones is their base offense wide receiver too. He looks good. He might be a wide receiver three start going forward. I'd rather start Zay Jones over Christian Kirk until further notice. Although they do play the Chiefs this week, I think all three receivers will be uh, good plays this week. Romeo Dobbs is the only health, healthy receiver right now for Jordan Love. I know Jaden Reed is there, but Romeo Dobbs looked good. Two touchdowns. He's going to continue to be involved. Uh, nice matchup against Atlanta this week. He's worth a bench spot and maybe a wide receiver three flex. Bateman, hold on to Bateman. Usage wasn't great, but uh, if, if Odell goes down or something, we might be interested there. Curtis Samuel was the best PPR play for the commanders. He's going to continue to be on the field a lot in three wide receiver sets. I still love stashing Jaden Reed. Marvin Mims, we have to pull, pour a little bit of cold water on. He was he missed a lot of the August in training camp and preseason, so he's still kind of getting his feet wet. I do think he could emerge uh, down the stretch, though, so don't drop Marvin Mims yet. I think Rasheed Rice is still worth a hold on the end of your bench. Uh, and then we get to the Rams receiver, Tutu Atwell. He played really, really well. He's a small guy. I don't know if he's going to be able to hold up for a whole season, uh, but I do think Atwell could be a wide receiver three flex for you like right now if you need one. If you had Cooper Cup go out or lost another player, Atwell can be in your lineup this weekend, even though it is a tough matchup against the 49ers. Tank Dell looked good. He's the wide receiver three for the Texans. He's a stash play. And Robert Woods also had 10 targets. He went five for 55 or something like that. So he's a guy that I, I wouldn't mind grabbing uh, as a potential flex play this week and then the guy that I really like here the most is probably Puka Nakua he showed more to me than Tutu Atwell I think he's a guy that uh, can operate in the Cooper Cup role while Cup is away we don't know when Cup's coming back he's on IR but they could hold him out longer uh, you know maybe past week five but even when Cooper Cup returns I think Puka is the guy I'd rather have than Tutu Puka and Tutu uh, but uh, Tutu Puka both guys can be wide receiver threes this week Rashid Shahid could be whipped out there as a what the heck flex on uh, Monday Night Football this week. And then with Allen Robinson and Calvin Austin, we're waiting news on Deontay Johnson, but I think both guys should be picked up. Allen Robinson's going to be out the field. He's going to be on the field more than Calvin Austin. But if Deontay's missing time, Austin's going to be the primary slot guy, I might assume. So we'll see. Both guys should be picked up, though. Kendrick Bourne. Might have been a fluke week one, but he did look good as the primary receiver for Mac Jones. Demario Douglas probably going to get more playing time as the season goes on. And then a, a deep sleeper here is Josh Reynolds, who I believe is the wide receiver two for Jared Goff. So pick up those guys if you can. Tight ends real quick. These guys should be owned. You guys can read that for yourselves. Uh, but otherwise, Juwan Johnson, Zach Ertz, Sam Laporta, Tyler Conklin. We'll see about him tonight. Isaiah likely disappointed. Luke Musgrave looks like a tight end one to me. I think both rookie tight ends, Musgrave and Laporta, can be your tight end one in week two. Jake Ferguson had seven targets, but he didn't really come. He didn't really come through. Uh, I, I do like the target share, though. I think he's a sneaky guy on the end of your bench. Hayden Hurst and Hunter Henry both look good as veteran tight end options, as well as Logan Thomas. I think all three of these guys can be sleeper tight ends if you're streaming that position. Don't sleep on Durham Smythe. He was on the field a lot for Tua. They're going to continue to throw the ball and play well. Uh, and then Adam Troutman with the injury we discussed earlier to Greg Dulcich. Adam Troutman's going to be the tight end target for Russ Wilson. And then a deep sleeper is Kylan Granson for the Colts. He looked decent as a number two or number three target. And then defenses for week two here, obviously the 49ers, Steelers, Bills, Cowboys, Saints, Dolphins, Ravens, Jets. These are elite defenses. I guess maybe not the Ravens, but uh, these guys should be owned. If any of these guys are available, please scoop them up. Otherwise, for this week, I like the Browns at Pittsburgh. I like the Packers at Atlanta. Eagles versus Minnesota, Commanders versus Denver's okay. I don't hate the Bucks at Chicago or versus Chicago. Maybe the Broncos versus Washington. That's a nice home matchup there. Uh, but then I think a lot of people are going to be on the Giants at Arizona. That's going to be a popular one. And then maybe the Colts. 
defense as well. So let me know if you guys have questions. Again, tomorrow night we're going to be going live uh, with the Waiver Wire live show at 7 p.m. Central Time if you guys want to join us. Please do bring your questions then. We can go over your, your waiver wire situations. Or if you guys want to join the Discord, you guys can hit me up there. There is a waiver wire spot for you guys to get in there. So the Discord link's in the description. I'll post some other things in the comments. Thank you guys so much for your time. Enjoy the Monday night football game, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow night. Peace.